Hello and welcome to another episode of the Hello Hosty podcast. Today I am joined by Jane Mack of Jane Mack Coaching, um, based up in Scotland, the west coast of Scotland. Hello Jane and thank you for joining us. Hi Clive, thank you for having me, it's lovely to be here. Brilliant. So um, do you want to tell us a bit about uh, who you are and, and what service it is that you offer? Yes, sure. So basically, um, I'm Jane Mack and um, I am a holiday let agency, a holiday let coaching consultancy for holiday homeowners and people who run in holiday let agencies. So I used to actually have my own agency in the past. Um, it was my husband and I actually had an agency, it was a holiday let agency, and it started off with just property management. So we just looked after the holiday homes and then we expanded it. And um, we brought in all the letting, the advertising, the bookings, and um, we did a lot of streamlining in it, brought in new services and basically grew it um, to the point that one of the UK's largest uh, letting agencies wanted to buy it. So after a, a year of talks, if you like, um, yeah, we sold it to them. Um, they wanted into our market over in the Isle of Arran, but they couldn't get in because we were there. So we then continued to work with it, work with it, you know, for another couple of years. And then after that, you know, for me, the time was right to move on. And, um, you know, I had a real passion for helping people in their holiday homes and helping people move their businesses forward. So that's what's brought me into doing the coaching and consultancy now in the holiday let industry. Superb. So you must have a, a plethora of knowledge around the, uh, the <laughs> short term rentals and, um, and holiday lettings. I do. I do. I swear I could have written about 10 books on the things, the situations, the experiences I've learned and the conversations I've had. So, yes, I've got a lot. And I think because I've got all that knowledge and experience, I just love sharing it with people, you mm -hmm. know, because all the things that I went through are things that everybody else is going to go through, you yeah. know. So it's um, yeah, that's why I just love that whole sharing of it all and helping people. So how many properties were you managing when you sold? So we were managing up to what were we sold? I think we were about 55 all in. So we'd started off with like 30 property management company uh, properties, just management. And then we decided to let, we brought on, I think we started the website with three properties on it. Mm -hmm. um, kind of hoping that we'd go to maybe 10 or 15. And that's just quite nice to ticking over with. But next thing, before we knew it, we were at 50 and then up to 55. And when we sold right. it. Um, so everybody who had property management with us had then come across for letting with us. They'd been with other um, organizations and moved across. So it just it just really grew. We just kind of had a, there was a gap in the market. We grabbed it and it grew. So it was it went really well. So many questions I have. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay, so let's start with your number one tip for growing, for growth in a property management business. What's your number one tip? I would say... Um, Try to fo focus very much on what the solutions are rather than striving for perfection and everything. Um, I think the biggest thing that we get, well, certainly I got caught up in um, years ago, was that trying to make everything perfect for everybody all the time, that every stage should be perfect. But there's actually so many elements in the industry that are completely out with our control that we can't control. We can't control borders breaking down. We can't control Wi-Fi not working, you know, things out with it. So it's about how you deal with the situation rather than you know, getting stressed out over the fact that things didn't go perfectly. How can you deal with it? And how can you, you know, meet your customers' expectations through it? Yeah, good advice. I often uh, feel that, that in my business endeavors, quite often I'll notice people that are focusing on the micro um, when really it's the macro that, you know, yeah. we keep our eye on. Um, yeah. So how did you manage to, to, to scale in terms of how did you acquire new properties? I know you said they, they were, uh, a lot of them were coming to you, but wh why were they coming to you? So I think for us, the big thing was we had, because we were on, on an island, we had, an, we had an office there, which we, when we expanded the business, we got a new office, which was in a really prominent location, which had parking, which was opposite the ferry terminal. So we, we placed ourselves there um, on a purpose, obviously, because we knew we needed to have that, that sort of location. So for us then, our big, the big thing for me really was always about that personal service and gaining those really good relationships with people so whether it be the owners whether it was the guests that were staying with us so a lot of our business came through referrals and reputation because we built such a reputation on the island and um, obviously we had to work with all our suppliers and our trades and all the people around us so we had a lot of good connections there a lot of relationships and um, people wanted to work come with us as well because they could get that personal service so that was a big thing for a lot of people who had their homes here and a lot of our guests here because they wanted they wanted to come in somewhere and book their holiday while they were still here. They wanted to book for the next year. And we, we made sure we offered all those services that people needed. So we were available to people. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of that came from feedback from previous owners who really wanted, 
just to be have somebody to come and talk to. They wanted somebody who knew about the property. They wanted somebody who knew where it was and about it. They wanted to talk to about it. They didn't want the companies who were not on the island, who didn't know about their properties. You know, they may have had fancy systems and all this great stuff that we didn't have, but they didn't have that personal experience. And that was a big pulling factor for us. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I would get new owners who would ask me, you know, where do you advertise? And do you advertise in all these different places? And we did because we didn't have the budget for it. But what I could give them was, I'm here when you're, you know, when something happens in your property, your guests, we're right here. I'm here for when you want to come in and see me and or meet at the house. We're here for you. We have all the local trades to hand. We have the relationships with these suppliers. So that was our big selling point rather than I've got a really fancy website that's got a great owner login and I've got a huge marketing budget because mm. that wasn't the thing for our, our owners. So for the ones, people who wanted us, that's where they came to us for. Yeah. So so really, I hear two things there. It's like the personal touch and also your, the physical positioning of your office. Sounds like a smart yeah. move to be like you said near the near the, the, the ferry port. So I guess yeah. I've not been to your island, but I guess that that's uh, that's where everybody comes in and goes out. They have to see you when they come. Yeah, yeah smart move. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Smart move. So um, how did you keep track of all your bookings and communicate with your your guests and your team? When this was going so on. For us, um, automation was a big thing. So obviously we got a booking system built into the website and that was all automated. So bookings, um, confirmations, emails, directions, everything was all automated. Um, and then uh, we also have a property management system. So that would log everything to do with, had everything for the owner's thing, side of things. So it was all their statements, all their income, their expenses, mm -hmm. their, their clients' accounts we held, plus all the maintenance. So we would manage everything there and a list of what was outstanding, who was dealing with what, and all the, all the records could basically be kept up to date. So yeah. anyone could have jumped into it, seeing what was mm -hmm. happening. So that was the sort of two main um, areas where we kept everything up to date. As well as that, we'd good old spreadsheets. Yeah. Um, you can't get a spreadsheet sometimes just yeah. everything was shared in the team because we had a team of seven so everything was shared so everybody knew where to go for the monthly tasks the annual tasks that mm. needed to be done and it was all very much structured out and scheduled yeah. um, because you had to be but you know by the time I left in the business you know, we were at over 70 properties by that stage so everything had to be very much you know quite simply done but very streamlined and yeah. very easy to operate we've like we're at the moment where we are the the bane of my life is is these statements monthly it's like oh god <laughs> the month is yeah. statement day and it's like all these statements got to go out and then mm -hmm. and, and and keeping track of everything and we use excel but um at the moment we're building our own software it sounds like you had your your own software built um yeah but yeah we're building building our own to take care of this mm -hmm. because uh it's it's something which like it requires being very litigious. You need to be exact, yeah. and and oh, it yeah. takes a lot of time if you're just using the Excel spreadsheet. So we're at the moment building yeah. um, a bit of software for that. Watch this space. Mm -hmm. I'll notify you once that's uh, once that's. It sounds done. great. I I love anything that's automated because there were some things that ours didn't automate. Obviously, regarding obviously around the statement side, and mm -hmm. it was always around maintenance jobs gets done. That had to go in a pile, but that then had to be manually input. So there were the manual bits still, which were the bug bearers. Um, yeah. but you know, others, yeah, there were still manual stuff, but. It was at least it was all in one place that was the yeah. main thing yeah. so yeah there probably was a lot more automation we could have done and i think anyone can do probably if i was still there i would have some form of more big bespoke section that would just automate and slide everything yeah. into yeah. Definitely. automation is king really oh yeah. my god yes definitely definitely there's nothing more satisfying than building a system and then stepping back and then watching things happen and going yeah yeah <laughs> oh absolutely yeah definitely definitely well yeah. when we first had the business that we had a lot of duplication of when bookings came in that went on the folder for the housekeeper it went on the sheet for the housekeeper and it went i was like why are we doing all this why are we like three places we're putting manually putting stuff so that's when we started with new systems in and everything so yeah it definitely makes it saves so much time so much time yeah, your yeah, time's yeah. better spent elsewhere then yeah exactly you have to be a master of your own time yeah oh, absolutely yes so speaking of time what do you spend most of your time doing well now you're a consultant so uh, as a consultant what, what do you spend most of your time doing with your clients um depends on what it is a lot most of it is be more is more around the sort of maximizing the rental potential of the property so it's what properties need um i a couple of calls with people last week they were actually all about direct bookings it was like how do we get that so social media comes into it a lot um and that sort of piece of storytelling and being yourself and showcase it's not all about your property but it's about you behind the scenes and so there's a lot of that comes into it as well um I have another person next week I'm speaking to and that is actually about I don't know how to use Instagram help me with Instagram so that's purely what we're, we're working yeah. on is just Instagram because she once again it's about direct bookings so yeah. you know it can vary from from place from person to person but there's some common themes coming through 
um, certainly around. I think the social media is a huge one on it. It's a yeah, huge it's interesting. It's the social media is interesting because I was very much of the idea that the way to use social media with short term rentals is to build a brand which is it it it, it transcends platforms. So it's it's the brand across every social media platform, across every booking platform, and the guests smart enough to find you on social media. I was I, I thought this was this was the, the the way to handle social media, but then I I had an interview at a, a podcast interview with a a guy called Ben Little. It's it, you you can see it on oh, the yeah. or whatever, mm -hmm. and um he he is a content creator for short term rentals, mm -hmm. and he blew my mind. He um he he was talking to me about the benefits of creating reels, um mm -hmm. like uh, like short form content. Um, and getting if you can create something that goes viral, he's he's created a couple of pieces of content that went viral. He's in Australia, and um, he had three hundred fifty thousand views on one of his videos, and mm -hmm. the, the the bookings rocketed for this owner, and mm -hmm. um, it really blew my mind. I, I thought it's uh, it's uh, it's a new it's a new take on the short term rental marketing on oh, social media. Definitely, I think there's so much right there. I think there's so much fun stuff you can do when you've got a property to showcase mm -hmm. and areas around about it you can use. There's so much fun stuff you can do on it. But I think for some owners, it's there's a time issue on it, obviously. But there's just that knowledge of how do I do it? Mm. How do I do this? And, you know, they don't want to put themselves on. There's a bit of a, a lack of confidence side there. And it's so, you know, there's quite a lot comes into it. But I think if, you, if you're if you willing to do it, you can create some great stuff out there. Yeah. So what's your what's your big tip on 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 Instagram, for example? What would you what would you say is like uh, the number one thing that an owner can do to, to drive direct bookings with Instagram? Um, I would say a couple of things and, and show yourself on it. So let people get to know you because people love to book with, the, you know, people buy from people, don't they? So people mm. want to get to know the person they're going to be booking with. So I think that's quite a good is to bring yourself into it, bring some storytelling into it and just share the experience, show mm. it as an experience, because that was always, you know, Instagram wasn't around when I had my, my agency before, but a big part of selling this, the, the properties were about sell the experience to people. Tell them how, what are they going to feel like when they get there? How's it going to look? What's it going to feel? What can you do? And it's about sharing that story and that experience and let people experience and think, yeah, I want that. Oh my God, I have to go and stay there. Yeah. So it's, you know, there's those few aspects come into it, definitely, to, to get yeah, people coming to you. So, so by, by saying that, uh, share the experience, you'd say like, you know, light the fire, make the breakfast yeah. table, this kind of stuff. Yeah, and it's even having, because you know, obviously whenever I did all our properties, I used to stage them, so light the fires and set out your wine and cheese or outside a table with the barbecue and all the stuff out there. Set the scene, let them see what they can have when they come to your property. And you know, and for a lot of places, it might have a, a really big roll top bath, fill it full of bubbles and sell them. Imagine soaking in this after days, walking and exploring the, the area, give them an idea of what you'll do and then get in that bath. So it's all those wee bits that just really set the scene. Yeah, love superb. it. Superb, superb. Yeah. Um, so what uh, kind of an ongoing theme of this podcast, I like to uh, I like to extract as much value for the, for the listener as possible. So do you have any uh, any tools, hacks or, 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 or tactics that you use that help you in your everyday business life? Um, some of them. One thing I would say is trying to really manage your time. Um, I love that by setting some boundaries and that comes from both my business right now and in the previous business because too quickly we can get swept into being very reactive and especially in the holiday let industry because that can be all consuming um, and it's about deciding what you're spending your time on when you're available when you can't be available for people and sticking to those boundaries um, mm. and certainly in that in this industry it's very easy to something happens and we jump to it and we jump to it we jump to a client's need and somebody wants us and we forget about all the other things we're doing so it's set those boundaries so you can actually work in your business spend that time working in your business rather than always in the day-to-day -day ops actually spend some time in it yeah excellent sounds like some good advice um mm -hmm. so look i don't know how applicable this question would be to you because it sounds like you've had quite a successful career and you've managed to to sell and and um and uh and, and move on to consultancy but looking back what advice would you give to your former self when you started out um i would say obviously i think what i said earlier about don't don't get so caught up in the everyday perfectionism of it and um, also I would just say realize that actually your business will not fall apart if you actually take some time off and allow yourself time off and that was one thing that we took years to realize that I can actually take time off um because you, you think that you have to be there all the time because what if something happens you must be there it's your responsibility so I would absolutely say for anyone starting out do realize you do need to take time off and it's okay because your business won't fall apart the time Good, good advice. It's important to recharge, I guess. 
That's oh, it. I think so. Because sometimes I think, especially when you have, <clears throat> excuse me, you're going through a season, you know, it's tiring, it's exhausting. It's, there's so much happening that you can sometimes fall out of love with your business a little bit. Yeah. So it's that bit of take time off, recharge, come back to it, but come back to it, excited to be back into it, back in love with it, wanting to be there. But you come back with ideas, don't you? You come back with thoughts and ideas and things you want to do. And it's bringing that energy back into it. And just, and I think you need that all the time. You need to keep recharging, especially in a, especially when it's very seasonal, really seasonal in the industry. You do need to recharge. Yeah, excellent advice. So I guess you're 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 working hardest while everyone else is on holiday, literally. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, I know. Yeah. Well, that's it. People used to come into our office and always said, "Oh, you must love living here. Oh, it's wonderful." And I think, no, I'm in this office all the time. I'm not out <laughs> doing the lovely things you're doing. So I do yeah. love it when I, I, you know, obviously I'm not doing that now, but I do love it now on the weekend. I I can go out and sometimes I go and do all the touristy things. I think, oh, I'm a tourist for the day. It's lovely. I love it. Yeah. 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 Super, super. <laughs> So if people would like to find out more about you and about your consultancy services, how will they go about doing so? Um, best thing is just you find me on Instagram, which is at Jane Mac Coaching. Um, also on LinkedIn at, at Jane Mac. So that's the best place to find me. And then from there, I've got links um, in the bio. It's or, or you can just message me on there. Superb, superb. Jane, thank you so much for your time today. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me. Cheers.